would have been yeah 2019 module one all right so you can stop and ask questions whenever you have a question you can basically you should have a paper in front of you so you can see what you got wrong okay. all right so to construct a, a truth table for this circuit you want to have your x and your y and um, then you'll have the x and y which will be x dot y and then you want to not that which will be not x and y so we start off with our normal bit patterns which will be 0 0 0 1 1 0 and 1 1 with like 4 bit patterns I always have you know, when you have 2 input and then oh shucks sorry my bad 0 0 0 1 1 0 and 1 1 right and then you have the x um x and y i mean zero and zero 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 and one zero zero and zero zero one and one will give you one and then the nut of that which will be one 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 zero all right that's good mm -hmm. So, all, right, yeah. all right, so that's the first one. Next is um, write the logic expression that represents the operation in circuit. That is x and y, but not yeah. So not x and y. Or you could write um, you could also put um x dot y and then put some brackets and then you could put a little prime symbol that will make it not also whichever one floats your boat all right so draw a diagram of a circuit that can accept two binary inputs referred to as x and y the circuit should represent the propositional object for not x or not y so if we know is a or we will put the or gate usually whatever whatever is the middle part you put that in but this will be or gate and two inputs coming inside there and then you have not x so that means you're going to find not there and then you have not y so then you have not there and then you have x coming in and y coming in so you have not x coming from here not y coming from there and the or coming there and that goes out. Right. describe the function of the following components given an example of each so each so a multiplexer is going to um select um, um multiple input one selects one input from multiple input x one input from multiple input based on the state of a selection of the selection bit based on the state of the selection bits all right um give an example it would be uh, like a cctv camera system that will one output at a time from many in uh decoder um takes in inputs and maps them to a larger output um, the example um, or another way you could say it, you could say n inputs and maps them to the two to the n outputs or bit patterns two to the n bit pattern anyone you want to say should be okay um an example would be like uh, memory addressing yeah, memory addressing or it could could be the yeah. Let me address it as usually the best example I could use for that. Um, after the coder would be aid of a block diagram show a two to four line decoder can be applied within a centralized gate opener system that manages four gates of an apartment complex. The system should allow each of the four templates to open for the whole gate. Alright, so you want to show that you have your decoder and the decoder gets two inputs, which will be I0 and I1. And then you have four possible outputs that you will get there. The four possible outputs will be well it's different gates right there so i put out g1 g2 g3 and g4 and you know, i put out g0 should put out i will start from g0 g1 g2 g3 okay so the explanation will be when an input of zero zero comes in g0 uh, open and when an input of one one comes in g3 will open basically yeah. Alright, so you just need to have the diagram, the inputs and the outputs labeled properly, and then you should put two to four to four the code like a signature as well. And then show that zero zero will open up one gate and then zero one 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 will open up the next gate respectively. Okay. I mean zero 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 one one zero and one one if you want. It will just use up all the lines, but you would this answer you would have you would have shown all the, the um, possible possibilities. Right. Um 
describe how the program counter register is useful while a computer program is executing a series of steps. Right. Um, so we know that the program counter keeps track of the current address, or no, the current instruction of the current instruction being executed. So checking the um, the checking the program counter will um, give the CPU inside a same symptom that will change that I realize around us when an instruction is executed the program counter will increment and that new memory address will be accessed that new memory address will be accessed and the cycle will continue until all steps have been executed right. that one kind of tricky but yeah it's kind of tricky but you understand basically yeah, for four marks, you have to yeah, that basically kind of go through the process of how, how steps will be executed. So the program counter will be like, okay, this is, um, we currently execute an instruction one. So then the CPU will be like, okay, where's instruction one? The program counter will be like, it's located over there. And then after it's done with this instruction here, it'll be like, okay, we can't, we moved on to number two. Then the CPU will be like, where's um, the next instruction? The program counter will point it to that one there. And then it will keep going on and on and on and on because basically a place where you keep track of where the next instruction is. So the program counter is like what the control unit. Well, you would know it as the control unit. The control unit is, keep, is what keeps track, but it's really the program counter does all the keeping track. Okay, it's consistent. Um, next number two, state one reason why two complement representation is considered more suitable to represent integers in modern computers than sign and magnitude and one complement because it gives an accurate representation of the zero yeah so the range of numbers that could be represented by using two's complement with 16 bits well this one kind of weird because i have no idea how they expect it to do all that math but what you could do is you could go zero one 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 is the lowest value you could convert that if you want but sorry is the highest value and then the lowest value would be one 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 this will be the lowest value so to convert that you'll have to do like 2 to the 16 now. so the highest value is 2 to the 16 minus 1 and this lowest value is negative 2 to the 16 okay i don't think any i don't think anybody got this correct because i don't find it i don't find it it makes sense to put this kind of maths inside there because it's not really going to help the cause it's not like you could use calculators okay but you understand the um the concept of why this is the highest value so i can represent the lowest value you could represent right oh shucks i'll say i only put eight my bad yeah it's going to be 16 so sorry it's supposed to be one 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 right yeah i don't know why i put eight i thought it was eight would be a such easier like an easier number to use but yeah but it's 16 so um yeah that's why you have to okay derive the two's complement represent each other decimal value negative 75 show all working all right so we gotta start off by um getting what 75 is 75 to be sen is represented by um with 8 bits 75 will be 64 plus 4 plus 1 to 4 and 8 will be 2 yeah, 72 plus yeah, 72 plus yeah, 72 plus 3 will be 5. Yeah. Alright, so that's 75. Then we have to invert. And when you invert, you get 1011 and it gets 0100. And then you have to add 1, which will give you the 1 here and the 0, 1, 0, 1. And that will be the answer there. Alright, so it's complement generally. Yeah. So then we have the sequence 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. One represents a simplified floating point number with a one bit sign. So we have this here is the sign four bit mantissa. So this here one, two, three, four mantissa. No exponent, sorry, three bit exponent. Right, one, two, three. I'm all right, the whole thing we got. So we have zero, one, oh, one, zero, one, oh, one. All right, so this is the sign, this is the exponent, and this is the mantissa. All right, so the sign tells us that it is positive. The exponent tells us that it is 101 will translate to the number uh, 5, and the mantissa is 0101. All right, so since we have 5, we have to move the decimal point of the mantissa across 5 times. One, two, three. That's a lot. All right, if this is so. Yeah, so if you move the decimal point across 5 times, you get 1, 2, 3, 4, Five. So you can get zero one zero one zero decimal point to end up across there, and then you can put this one zero one zero. 
has a plus 2 which is 10, 10 to reach 10 and it is positive so you take a positive sign and be like all right it's positive 10 that is your answer there is actually no, no decimal in it so it's kind of weird normally it does have a decimal all right now these registered questions should be able to click so mar memory address register the goal of the memory address register is to store the next memory location that has to be at address stores the next memory location will be um, address or the next memory location to be read from the address or return to mdr well that one kind of gives itself so we uh, stores the instruction or stores the data from the memory address that was called and IR the instruction register um those are instruction fetch from memory right each one of those registers remember because registers when you do a when you do a execution and have an upcode and operand and, and the operand would be what memory address it came from so when it gets the information from the memory address it will go into the cpu and it has to be stored in some register inside there and those are these are the registers that will store the thing that um that you need to do to carry out the process okay. All right, describe the three main stages of the instruction cycle. So you have fetch the code and execute. Fetch is fetch will um, get the um, instruction from memory and bring into the CPU to be carried out. The code is to uh, determine the instruction by separating the opcode and operand, opcode and operand, and then execute will be carry out the instruction and store the result in memory or register. All right, that's a straightforward answer, that, you know, a straightforward question that we always get. So, no issues there. All right, explain how cache memory can increase the speed of a computer system. So you want to say along the lines that um, cache memory operates at the same speed of the CPU so there is no there is no lag or buffering there's no lag or buffering that takes place when instructions are requested hence the CPU operates at maximum speed okay. briefly outline one situation where cache memory does not help to speed up a computer um, you have a um, when the computer keeps switching program the cat constantly has to be changed slash refresh and the sign it takes a um, hold back to CPU speed within CPU so basically if you keep switching programs the, the stuff that you put inside the cache will will basically kind of get a uh, hold up but no the stuff that will go inside the cache wouldn't be needed anymore so you have to keep throwing it out and get any new things for the new program over and over and over and over and over and that doesn't work out too well. That doesn't work out too well for the CPU. Uh, right, we're good there. All right, so that is module one.